So really the, the main idea uh, or the key concept behind a learning community is uh, in, in its name community and so it's really about creating a community of uh, learners and uh, teachers that can uh, come together uh, and ways that we do that is through um, really two main things flexibility and variety so we really create spaces um, that are very flexible so it allows for a lot of different modes of learning to take place and we create a variety of spaces as well so this really differs quite a bit from a, a very traditional model. Uh, take a look at a traditional model, it's really the same types of spaces. So you have um, similar sized classrooms that are aligned along a, a corridor. And so um, with that, you don't really have a lot of variety. You don't have a lot of opportunity to uh, do a lot of different types of activities. And so uh, we know in the 21st century that, uh, with 21st century learning, that um, different modes of learning are important. So you have collaboration, you have, uh, you still have direct instruction, uh, you have um, project-based learning, a lot of different activities need to take place in, uh, for 21st century learning. Uh, so the space, the biggest difference is now we have a variety of spaces. So we have some small rooms, uh, some medium-sized rooms, big rooms, a lot of open spaces, and then a lot of flexibility between those spaces. So you can, uh, when you have a class of, uh, you know, uh, many students, every student is doing really a different activity. They all learn in different ways and so it's really important to provide a space that allows for those different activities to take place. So again kind of contrasting that with a traditional classroom, if every student is doing their own thing in a, in a small classroom it gets very busy and very hectic. You have issues with noise. So you need to be able to kind of flow out into different areas. So it may be that some students still are within a classroom type space Maybe they're working with a, a teacher in that space. Some other students may break out into a common area that is adjacent to that mm -hmm. area. And they may be um, either working in groups, working with their peers. Uh, they may be working uh, individually. Um, but really, they're kind of in charge of you know, how they really learn best. And they can find the space that really um, allows them to, um, to work in that manner of how they, how, how they learn best. Very nice. Having that variety of spaces mm -hmm. and really um, is key for that um, and so it allows um, students to, to collaborate in uh, open spaces you can have also have small group rooms so a small group of students can come together mm -hmm. um, and have some acoustical privacy in that area so that way they're not being distracted by another group of uh, students so it allows them to kind of come together work together um, also to it um, allows for uh, what, what I call kind of more the informal collaboration. So, mm. for instance, in a, in a common area, there may be a student working on a certain activity and another student kind of just walking by and seeing what they're doing and being very interested in um, kind of what they're doing and making connections to from mm. what they're doing to what they're doing and then they um, start to work together because of that. Yep, so having spaces um, to work on projects is mm -hmm. uh, some creativity of um, allowing the, the students to um, do things, to, to build things, work with their hands. Um, uh, in the learning community, um, we've created a, a maker space that allows that to happen. So having a um, having materials, so the flooring is a hard surface flooring, there's a sink in that space that really allows for those wet, messy projects where the students can uh, create. Uh, also to the sort of the setting, um, the, uh, the space has a lot of natural light in the space, which really uh, helps to kind of inspire the students as well to be more creative. Um, so having, um, having those elements really help with um, students' creativity. Yeah, the culture um, changes quite a bit. Um, the one thing that we see is um, how teachers work with each other is a big piece of that. And so um, in a traditional setting, teachers are, are typically separated, isolated mm -hmm. from their peers. They may interact uh, in a teacher lounge, but really they're kind of teaching in their individual classrooms. So the culture now really changes uh, in that they are really collaborating, working together. The students pick up on that as well, and they really see how the teachers are collaborating. And that also uh, extends to them, and they, they um, see how they behave, and they almost, uh, in ways, um, uh, replicate that behavior uh, and so the culture really changes to more of a community now and so it's a larger community rather than having the isolated classrooms you have a much bigger community and, and people behave more in a communi uh, communal fashion in that sense.